Hey YouTube, this is Troy. This video is going to be my final video on allergy control, uh, unless you know some comments later down the road or some experiences down the road spark some additional videos. Uh, this one I'm going to talk particular, particularly about how I overcame my hair allergy issue. Quick little background, when I started this tank I used dry rock, the Pucani rock that you see here. I didn't cure it though, so all of the organic matter in the rock, basically when I put it in my, my new tank, hit the nice warm salt water, it decomposed and started releasing everything, right? Mostly, mostly phosphates. Um, so, you know, when I started this tank, it took about a month to cycle, very, very normal cycling activity. So you know, you put in the, I put in the live rock, put in my dry rock, um, you know, fired it up. I was, I, I really didn't run GFO right off the bat. I didn't start my refugium right off the bat. I kind of let the thing cycle. It did its normal cycling situation where it did the ammonia, the nitrites, the nitrates. We got the diatom bloom. The diatoms died off. Nitrates red zero. So about a month after I started, the tank red zero nitrates. I'm like, okay, great. So then I started seeing this weird kind of algae that, you know, not hair algae, but just an algae that kind of coated all of the live rock. And and then it and then it progressed into bits of hair algae all over the place, but then progressed to pretty much the lower half of all these rocks covered in hair algae where where the um, where the corals aren't, where the few corals I have aren't position so you know at that point I had the refugium going I had the chetomorpha had the GFO going I was changing out the GFO at least every water change which at this point I was doing water changes weekly and I was a little more aggressive than I wanted to um, but just to try to export that nutrients as best I can and I that was about after it's a month after it cycled so a month into the tank for the next four months, that's kind of the ritual I had. You know, changing out GFO, I had the refugium, got the skimmer going, uh, weekly water changes, trying to combat the hair algae issue. The interesting thing about the, the refugium is the chetomorpha would just wilt and die away. I could never keep that stuff alive. I had a light that I know worked for other individuals because that's how I purchased it. I went out with, you know, hit up other YouTubers for recommendations on a refugium light. I knew the light worked because it worked for other people and they were growing Chato like no one's business. So, you know, I, the, the interesting thing is my nitrates, since, I, since the tank cycled a month into setting it up, nitrates read zero. Every, for those next four months that I was fighting hair allergy, nitrates were zero. Now, obviously, the hair allergy is going to consume some of the nitrates, but it's also going to feed heavily off of phosphates. And so um, I was under the conclusion that, you know, like I said, my live rock was producing a significant amount of phosphate because I did not cure it. So the next step was I went ahead and I did some carbon dosing. <clears throat> went on the internet, read up on carbon dosing, low nutrient system seemed like a logical next step for me. Bought a bio pellet reactor, fired it up, had it running for about three months, really with no real significant change to the tank. Nitrate still read zero through this whole, this whole time, even, you know, this, this is eight months, seven months, eight months into the system. And the Chato, I, this is, I had a second attempt with Chato, it died off as well. So, <clears throat> obviously, any kind of microalgae you're going to have in the tank, like a Chato Morpha, appears to be heavily dependent on some traces of nitrates to function. I think most of those microalgaes, and I'd love to hear your guys' opinion, is probably more efficient at removing nitrates as it is phosphates. I think it probably does remove some phosphates, but it probably removes far more nitrates than it does phosphates. Um, and so <clears throat> about six weeks ago, I said, forget it. I can't keep the, the refugium running. I'm going to go ahead and just take it out. So I took out the refugium, took out the piece of dry rock, 
cleaned out that entire chamber. There's nothing running in that chamber right now. Um, I was burning through GFO every week and I'm like, well, this is wasting my money. So I took out the GFO reactor uh, and I'm just running, just running uh, the bio pellet reactor in my skimmer. And, and so I'm researching because I'm, I'm like, okay, you know, I know, but I know bio pellets or carbon dosing in general, using bacteria to consume or to eat your, your nutrients and then skim them off using your skimmer. The premise of that is that there is, you know, I think it's, it's more to target nitrates. You know, it's, it's a combination of targeting nitrates and phosphates of which I have still at this point in, in my tank's life cycle, have not had any nitrates register since it cycled the first month. So I, I did a little research on it on the internet and I came across a few articles um, or actually forum posts on the, the, uh, the concept of Renfield ratio. Renfield ratio, you can Google it you know, put it in your favorite search engine and find it and read up on it. I'm not gonna go into it in great detail, but the premise of it is that they did a study against plankton in the ocean and they determined that there is a ratio that it consumed carbon, nitrates, and phosphates. And it consumed, the, you know, the most of the elements that it consumed was carbon, the next was nitrates and then the least was phosphates and there's there's that ratio I don't know off the top of my head but go search it the, the important thing is that they have identified a particular ratio that um, fosters plankton to grow in the ocean <clears throat> and a lot of individuals have correlated that um, to the bacteria that's being used in your bio pellet reactor and even to the point where some people that are carbon dosing noted that, listen, when I fire it up, they, this is them basically saying that when they, when they started carbon dosing, they had nitrates and phosphates. Initially, it worked very well. They saw tremendous improvement. Their nitrates dropped down, their phosphates dropped down, the nitrate, nitrates dropped down to zero. And then over a period of time, their phosphates would creep back up. Their nitrates would stay at zero, but their phosphates would creep back up. And they're like, well, what the heck's going on? And a lot of people circled back to Renfield ratio, where for the bacteria to be as efficient as it possibly can to consume the carbon and the phosphates, you also need nitrates. There's some ratio between carbon, nitrate, and phosphate that all three need to exist for the bacteria that is consuming those three nutrients through your, you know, your carbon dosing regimen. Um, if one of the three is lacking, your bacterial stall. And that's what these people were experiencing. And, and others are basically saying you're, you're, you're stalling, your bacteria is stalling. And here's the counterintuitive thing, but what they recommended is that they dose nitrates. I know, I don't think it's controversial because Aquariums, you know, large aquariums have been doing this, but it's counterintuitive for most of us because everything we've ever, everything that I've ever heard is, listen, you gotta get your nitrates down, nitrates down, nitrates down. Oh my God, I'm dosing nitrates. What, what the hell, right? Um, the thought being is if you dose small amounts of nitrates, it will reactivate the bacteria to consume the carbon, the nitrates, and the phosphates. Now keep in mind, it's consuming far more nitrates than it is phosphate. So if you have a phosphate problem, which I had, you need to make sure you have some levels of nitrates there so that it will consume that phosphate, those phosphates. Um, so reading that, I'm like, all right, this is interesting. I don't have a tremendous amount of investment in corals. Um, my tank still reads zero nitrates. Fish can you know, fish can definitely function with a degree of nitrates. And actually there's, there's a lot of opinion out there. A lot of people subscribe to that, you know, anywhere from, from 0.5 to two to four parts per million of nitrates. It's not necessarily a bad thing for your coral. It might even make your, your coral thrive. The interesting thing is, well, some people actually reported that some of the additives they use in their zeofit dosing 
most notably, I think it's Zero Start. Uh, someone took Zero Start and they tested it. And they basically, the way they tested it is they took five parts of roadie water, one part of Zero Start, and tested it for nitrates. And what did they find out? That there's nitrates. There's nitrates in that. So the natural dosing you do in a Zeal Fit, well, at least if you're dosing that, you're, you're dosing nitrates into your tank. Um, I would welcome, I mean, this is, I saw this on a post in, in a blog. So, you know, I'd love if anyone, I don't, I don't have that additive. If anyone has that additive and they want to try that and maybe post a comment, if, whether or not that's true or not, obviously everything you read on the internet, you got to be a little skeptical of, but anyways. So the next step I did, I'm like, all right, fine. I'll run a little experiment. I'm getting nowhere right now. So if I dose, if I, if I, very carefully dosed nitrates, then I couldn't envision a significant harm as long as I was very, very careful. The product that a lot of individuals had success with is actually a product used for planted tanks and it's made by Seachem and it's Flourish Nitrogen. I went out and bought it on um, Amazon, you know, it's cheap and I, I basically dosed one capful can't remember what a cap full is for sure. Um, if it's five milliliters or what, into my 90 gallon system. And then I tested the next day. The next day it was with one parts per million. And I'm like, all right, I want to range from two to four parts per million. So the next day I dosed another cap full. And I got basically two parts per million. And then I kind of hovered right around that two parts per million. So about every other day I test it. And if it dipped below two parts per million, of nitrates, I dose a little bit more. I cut my water changes back to every other week. And then um, I just kind of sit back and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna wash this, see what happens. So after about a week and a half, two weeks of this, the green hair algae that, that was all over the place started to turn brown. Now I know that there's reports of brown hair algae out there, so I didn't get overly excited, but it's a change, right? So I'm like, oh, this is interesting. So then, um, you know, kept dosing, kept it right around between two and, or four, or two and four parts per million. And then I started seeing the green hair algae thin out. And I'm like, whoa, it's, something's happening. Um, and then, you know, about, uh, about three and a half weeks into it, I didn't really dose anymore because the hair algae appeared to be dying off. As it was dying off, it was releasing nutrients back into the system. It was basically feeding the bacteria in my biopillet reactor. This is my assumption. And it was continuing to reduce and reduce and reduce the hair algae to the point of what you see right now, which is basically my system with really hardly any hair algae in it at all. I mean, there's a couple little areas I have to really look hard to actually find any hair algae in this tank at this point in time. So um, I thought that was really interesting. I didn't see a whole lot of videos on Renfield ratio out there. If I, I'm gonna go back and try to find some of those, those uh, postings I went to on the internet and I'll post it in the comments so you guys can read up on it. I'm not necessarily advocating you go out and start dosing nitrates, but I figured I would at least expose you to this. And if you think you fall into the same category, maybe it's something you need to research and look into. Um, I'm not dosing nitrates now. My tank reads anywhere from 2.4 or 2.5 to, to 4 parts per million. Uh, I'm going to leave it like that. I, I just continue to do a two uh, every other week water change, and I'm just running my biopellet reactor and my uh, my um, uh, my skimmer. So that might change. I might put the GFO back on at some point, but right now I see no need to. So I figured it was interesting enough that I should create a video on it. You guys, let me know. Uh, that's really that's really what I did to kind of clear my problem up. Um, I'm hoping it's not just coincidental, but uh, um, you know that's that's where we're at. All right. If you guys got any questions or comments, obviously feel free to post them for the video, and I'll, I'll try to answer them as best I can. All right. Later.